Okay, so these are the basic solid shapes. I can make little tweaks. You know, just pushing and pulling certain things, rotating certain things. I have that that move tool with auto select layer. So it will select it immediately. And that is nice. I'm trying not to get too hung up in tiny details. But sometimes those things can kind of drive you nuts. Right? So you know how you can address them when you want to. And then I want that little divot of blue. So simple thing, make a little box, color it with the blue. Use transform to move it in to the where I want it. And then I can rotate it and I can warp it. Kind of pinch it off around it out. And are these shapes matching exactly the shapes of the composition? No, but are they getting the, the eye movement? Similar, representing the ideas of the composition. Yes, that is what we're after. But all we've used are just solid <laughs> shapes so far. All right. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. But that's easily fixed. I was doing it by looking here instead of using my uh, my guide layer. So Command T, stretch it, rotate it. Shows you how nice it is to have these digital features that you can move around. Using warp. Really get in there. Okay. So now I've got the solid shapes. I can turn off my background and my top layer, right? And all I'm missing is the pure white. So I'm going to take the 20% white at the background here and now make it 100%. So it fills it all in. So here's my composition. At this point, I could click and slightly darken certain things. And try to get a different solid color, right? But there are better ways. And that is to uh, use layer styles. So this is a perfectly fine example but for instance this shape you can see in the actual composition it starts light on one end and darker on the other end so what i can do is i can double click on the layer itself not the layer icon and i can add what's called a gradient overlay to it and i'm using photoshop 2018 which i recommend it's just a really basic i'm going to reverse that angle it the linear gradation, kind of similar to what I see. Then I'm going to take that opacity way down. And that helps, right? I can also give it a color overlay and just kind of warm it up a little bit with like a, a lighter orange. And I can play with the opacity of these things on top of each other. And they will not affect and push the white a little bit further. They will not affect my shape layer. They're just added to it as an effect. These little effects are quite helpful. I can take this background blue and add a gradation to it.
And I can make it more subtle. I can darken these colors. Like so. And I can do the same thing with these other shapes. But what I'm not doing is merging the shapes. I'm just kind of playing around with them individually a little bit. Adding some subtlety and some gradation. Because this image has a little bit of that. And these are all fun things to play with. You can even try different blending styles like overlay. And you can always go back and make changes. Let's flip it. So these are just little final touches. All right. Now I'm not going to try to reproduce all these little lines, even though they do help the composition quite a bit. But what I could do, let's see, maybe take an ellipse, and I'll show you a different property now. And I'll just do it with one. And I'm going to transform it, rotate it, maybe warp it. So with each of these shapes we're making, they're the shape tools in Photoshop, but when we get into Illustrator, these are going to be called paths. They can be shapes that are filled in with a solid color. And that's called a fill. But they can also be outlines, right? So if we look at the properties of these shapes, you'll see that we have a fill turned on, but we can turn that off. And we can turn on what's called a stroke. And we can make that stroke different colors. Let me raise this above so you can see what I'm doing here. So I took what was a filled up shape and I turned it into a black stroke that I can keep editing. You know, make thin or thick. And I can even change it from dotted, you know, to bullets, to lots of different options. Like rounded edges at different intervals, with bigger gaps. <laughs> and now that I have that as an option, I can make duplicates of that. Command J, Command T. And I can kind of double it up. And I can rotate it. And I can duplicate it, double it up, move it up above. Oops.
And so these are all using the different kind of shape tools, but these are now using strokes within those shape tools. And so it's just the outline that now matters. And you can use warp, but they'll always wrap around the entirety of the path selection. So they're not perfect, right? but they're interesting. They give you that aspect. Oops. And they're a little harder to select because you have to get right on them. Maybe something like that. And then if I want to cover them up, what can I do? Well, I can simply duplicate, transform, move something on top of them in a certain place, and then move it up through the layers. Interrupt it. And then I can duplicate that again and do that over and over. So that gives me a little sense of it, and I can do it one more time, move it down, transform this. Okay, so I think I'm ready to submit this in all its imperfections, right? And just like we added on the layer styles, we can always take them off just by unchecking effects. And I can even, I haven't played with this, but I can even play with the opacity of them. Right. So I let some of it come through, but not all of it. So in these ways, you can change the colors. You have a lot of control with these tools. The last thing, I want to just add some gradations within this. And I do a lot of squinting, see what's going on. That's a good one. And then lastly, this one. And then if you want really fancy effects, you can even get into patterns. You know, things like, like that. You can find your own pattern. Let's see. And you can merge them together. I want a weirder pattern like that. And I can then add that pattern in different places. So you just have a lot while keeping it still within all the tools that we've been using. And of course, it's easy to overdo it, which I'm probably doing right now. But the important thing when we turn this project in is that everything is still a shape layer. It hasn't been rasterized. There we go. And you'll see that there is a little shape icon within each one. Okay, so now to finish this, I simply save it as my PSD. And then I'm going to save it again with that name as a JPEG to the desktop. Because we want to fill up the whole rectangle. And then we're going to upload to the desktop 
a JPEG version. 